Welcome to SVD TV's news for Wednesday, April 6, 2022. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. On today's feature of Rise from the Ashes, Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, Michelle Forbes, in this report recounts the challenges faced by the organization during the explosive eruption of Lassifera Volcano in April 2021 and the lessons learned. It was sleepless nights and 12-hour workdays for Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, Michelle Forbes. With only 19 members of staff, Nemo was able to mount evacuation exercise of 20,000 persons from the north of the island. We were preparing for this event for quite some time. We don't know when it was going to happen. We just knew that we had to continue our knowledge management and training persons and informing persons about the risk that we are living with, which is last of volcano. And I actually had an accident on the 7th of April trying to hustle to come down to have a meeting with the scientists. And that night, and I, it's a story I think I need to say, that night I didn't sleep for whatever reason, whether it's the accident or the volcano was on my mind. And I sensed things were going to start, going to start changing. And I, I was monitoring it myself from my, from my phone because I can do, I, you know, monitoring the signals. And I couldn't sleep that night. And every two, three, every two hours or so, I would get up and, and look at my look at my device to see what was happening. So when Professor Robertson called me about five o'clock in the morning, I knew he was going to call. And he's, you know, at that point, you couldn't say, yes, you need to evacuate. Now he said, Michelle, things are, things are looking a little, you know, things are heating up a bit. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we don't know what, less. it's going to be a, a, a day that we have to watch. We worked with the Coast Guard so that when the evacuation order was given, the Coast Guard took control of the sea evacuation and it, it, and it went really well, um, the sea evacuation. and. The only challenge we would have had there is when the boats went to um, Bowley. Bowley Wharf is small. It couldn't ac accommodate all the boats at one time, so they had to be diverted to Kingston. So it meant that once they were diverted to Kingston, we had to provide, you know, change change plans a bit, call persons at last minute to get get persons from the Kingston Wharf to the various shelters. So the shelters that was designated for persons to go to from from Chateaubel Air, for example, we ended up having people in Kingston instead of maybe Bowley or or leave. And now I think we did have some challenges evacuating persons from the northeastern part come down because of the lack of transportation. We did we, we don't have most of our transportation that we have to use is private. So we had, did have some challenges there. People were waiting for quite some time. And the challenges kept coming. As Forbes explains, preparing the shelters for such a large portion of the population did not go according to plan. And but we did our best. Um, in that regard but by saturday we had some of the things in in sock and i think after first after the first week we started to things settling a little bit because by then we would have had um by then what we had to do for example where we couldn't get the meals being prepared on time we had to hire caterers to prepare the meals and you know that weekend we, we hired caterers and we had that win for about two weeks until things you know things settled down i think by by the by the next week we would have had the had most of the bedding situation sorted out because we got the cots flying. We got the cots to flying from Miami on the on I think it's on the Friday, and it decay and then come up on a boat Saturday night from Grenada. So by Sunday Monday we had to we had we had some of the of some of the bedding to to distribute. Looking back, Forbes admits there were areas where improvements could have been made. And she gave the assurance that Nemo will be upgrading their disaster management policies. We can do as much preparation as we want. We often judge on our response. So, you know, I, it's a, it's telling. I think a lot of persons. I think we fell down in the communications because we were going good um, initially, but then when the volcano went bang, we kind of lost it a bit in communications in terms of communicating with the public. And we have to strengthen that. I think are we bold enough to say that is one area that we have to strengthen. Nemo has made tremendous strides in its management of national disasters over the years, and Director Forbes urged all Vincentians to make disaster preparedness a priority. Reporting for SVG TV News, Christina Smith. Our news team recently took a walk through the village of Sandy Bay on the windward side of the island in the red zone and spoke with a number of residents on how their lives, particularly their homes, were affected by the volcanic eruptions and the progress that has been made with their living condition almost one year on. 
We have more in this report. A number of homes in the red zones were either destroyed or damaged by ash, mud flow, or debris as a result of the explosive eruption of the Lassifer volcano in April 2021. Some of the affected residents in the Santa Bay area on the windward side of the island shared with us in details how badly their homes were affected and the overall impact it had on their community. When I came back here, yeah, it was like a Sahara desert, real terrible. And I came back since the third of um, the fifth of um, July. It was real rough because no water, no light. You have to go up the river, up the spring there to get water. And it was real terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, ash is right up to here. Yes. This way. And this ash. can open. Yeah, it can open. Real no terrible. Ash, man. Yeah. Uh, it was ash. Yeah. Flies, but the ash come down, the flies goes through. The wind, even all of the bed was red. But that doesn't mean the ash ain't coming in. Uh, and it thing with ash, because they are still posted through the door. Yeah. Yeah, that, that I've been wondering how the, the ash get in. Even, even on this stove day. Yeah, this stove couldn't catch when I come back. Yeah. How to get somebody to fix. One resident also described how seeing the damage done to her home brought tears to her son's eyes as he was in such a state of shock upon returning home. Oh God, it was really sad because when I think I, my, I sent out my son up here to see when he come back long, he started to cry. Me see what happened? He said, Mom, my house is flawed. We neighbor roof there, gone now. He was up there when I come here. The son them was like up the, up the side there where you take her from there. Yeah, so he said when he up there, he's eating things. So I said, praise God, you didn't drop in, like, you know? So he, he get to think of some of the things off of the roof. So if he didn't think it, my whole thing that gone. But they come and they do it. That thing inside there, they come and do it a kind of a way and say they will come back. Well, up to now, I see they come and think. But they do it up a kind of a way and say they will come back. So if they come, I will glad and whatever like that too. Yeah, so that's how it is. We also visited the temporary home of Miss Cordes, a well-known former teacher in the community, who explained to us how scary it was moving back into her home after the eruption. It was difficult moving back into my home because what happened is that when the children came to clean, they realized that dust was on the beds because my beds, everything were intact, right? So they noticed in the roof that you saw a lot of ash. They tried to use a vacuum cleaner to pull out some ash, but realized that as soon as they started the vacuum, before you could think, it was filled with dust. So they decided, I have a hole in the roof, a manhole like that you could go up, because all my wiring was done in the roof, and that's where the guy went through to do it. So they put a camera up in the roof, and what they saw was nothing more than thick, thick dust. The ash because it's a roof that was there since 1971. There was dust inside it, but the dust and the ash mixed together. And then I couldn't sleep at night because you would hear sound. And I, the first thing that came in my mind, I hope is not corroded wires touching together up there. That was the scary part. Because when they took off the roof, it was worse than they had expected. It was very scary, sleeping in the house at nights and hearing these little songs, and you're wondering, I hope it's not the wire. Although some of the residents in Sandy Bay are still battling with the presence of ash and the scarcity of food supplies, they are still finding a way to lift themselves up and being grateful for the gift of life after going through such a horrific ordeal. Reporting for SVG TV News, I am Nicole Ballantyne.
Continuing now with more local news, the many rivers and streams across SVG running extremely low is a clear indication of how bad this year's dry season is. Hydrologist and senior engineer technician with the Central Water and Sewage Authority, CWSA, Danroy Ballantyne, on the API television program this morning said 2021 also a very dry year with which in, is impacting the water supply system. Ballantyne also explained that this has been the driest season in a span of over 10 years. We based our, our output on is the Korikoff report and their prediction is that we should have a short dry, drought period up to the end of May. All right, presently we are in the, the, the mid of this season um, and it's, it's really impact, impacting our, our um, water supply at this time. And uh, um, it's, it's really impacting because 2021 was a dry year. Um, so these are really affecting um, at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Coming out of 2021, as I mentioned, all right, we have just about 35% reduction in rainfall in 2021. 21. So 2021 was really dry. It's, it's, it's for the 10 year period, all right, um, it's one of the driest year for a 10 year average period, mm -hmm. all right. Um, Dalloway has just about 40.1% reduction in rainfall, all right. Um, I say all of that to say that we come out of a dry year going into the dry season. The senior engineer technician advises that there may be a possible water ration if various water supply intakes do not increase. And Dalloway, there are no overflows, which means that um, all of our water are actually going into the distribution system. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we should actually meet sometime this week to update our our report mm -hmm. to the public because um, last week report indicated that um, just asking resident to conserve right all right we haven't um, commenced the, the the rationing because um, at this point we, we we try to to actually tap into you no know, different sources and things like that um, at CWSA, all of, all of our sources are interconnected. So we can actually shift water supply from Montreal Hall um, to Jennings and Jennings to Montreal Hall if needs be. Air Canada has halted all flights to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and other neighboring islands at least until November. The announcement was made by Chief Executive Officer of the SVG Tourism Authority, Glenn Beach, who was at a news conference today and said the development has to do with the implementation of a new law by the Canadian government for Canadian-owned airlines. It is not because of demand. It more has to do with certain new laws that the Canadian government have put in place. And this goes for Canadian-owned airlines. So the new law basically stipulates new, new rules for Canadian-owned airlines and their crews. And the new laws basically stipulate how long they can fly for each day. Now, if you don't have a daily flight, it makes it harder for them to change over crews. And therefore, we don't have a daily flight out of Air Canada, nor, nor do any of the other countries I just spoke about. But Barbados does. So it makes it easier from, for them to change over crews each day. Uh, we had meetings with Air Canada. Um, obviously, this, we're distraught about it because the demand is there. That the demand is there for people wanting to come home direct. Direct. Let, let us admit it. A lot of those who have traveled have been spoiled by the direct flights. And, 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 and honest, I mean, who could blame them? It, it's, it's quite nice to just get on the plane and, 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 and arrive here without having to spend a whole day in, a, in another country before you get to St. Vincent and the Grenadines.
followed the announcement yesterday of the return of Vinci Mass in full format this year, the SVG Tourism Authority CEO said they have tried negotiating with the airline and other major airlines, given the fact that a number of nationals and visitors from the Canadian market would want to come in for the festival, but they have had no luck thus far. Uh, we had numerous meetings with Air Canada. They could not change it. We spoke to WestJet, which is another major airline out of, out of Canada. Um, all the airlines, especially within North America, are having one major problem at, um, since this pandemic, and that's crew. They can't find the crew to do a lot of these flights. Um, we met with Southwest a few, a few weeks ago. You know, they made it clear that we were on their radar, but they are having a serious problem with crews. Their, their plan was to hire 1,200 new pilots this year. They have come nowhere close to that. I don't think they've been able to get 100 this year. I might be. So that is a problem. Air Canada has the same problem, American Airlines. Um, so the number of flights and the planes they have available has become difficult. Beat said that they are hoping to speak with the Caribbean Airline and other airlines to see if they can fill the void for the route, at least for the summer. Another option is we are looking at Sunwing. I think many of you would remember that we had charted Sunwing a few times out of Canada to do the flight um, once a week. We're not sure if that's going to be viable. Um, one of the reasons is that WestJet is in the process of purchasing Sunwing. So we're not sure how that's going to go. But also, Sunwing's bookings are quite strong right now. We're not sure if planes will be available for them to, to fly into St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But it is an option that we are, we are looking at. Um, American Airlines loads continue to be very good out of Miami uh, twice a week. Um, same with Virgin out of the UK. Of course, it does help that we are tagged with Barbados in terms of that. And then um, Caribbean Airlines out of, out of New York, we, w we are hoping that load will, be, will, will get better. I think um, part of the problem is that people did not realize Cal had started to fly, fly again with this pandemic. I remember Trinidad's borders were closed for so long, and our flights with Caribbean Airlines out of JFK and out of um, Piarco has to come through Trinidad. So with their borders closed, we couldn't do anything. An alternative preposition for exporting agriculture produce through the government is being considered by cabinet. Speaking on radio this morning, Prime Minister Dr. Al Gensav said the preposition in light of complaints from farmers over the years of being unfairly treated by traffickers. The Prime Minister said that an investigation is being done to see if they can revitalize the marketing cooperation services for farmers without completely getting rid of the traffickers. A lot, a lot of produce, fruits, vegetables, ground provisions, spices being produced. Yes. You go about the country, you see we, we have been, um, the weather has been pretty good to the farmers. Thus far, the, the agricultural sector is showing the signs of revival. There are challenges, of course, yes. and I'll talk about a few of them. And the proposal which the farmers made is to, look, let us, without cutting out traffickers, and you wouldn't be able to cut out the traffickers, you know, you, you, people who still want to sell to them, and in any case, they are farmers. Some farmers who are themselves traffickers um, or members of the family, so they produce for them, so you can't tell them just to sell to one central agency. Legally, I'm talking about, and it wouldn't be sensible practically either. But we have under investigation, the, the, the working out some details, and we have, we took the decision at cabinet four weeks ago to see if we can revitalize a marketing corporation, but in a, a new period of, of a different kind. The Prime Minister highlighted the challenges faced by the former marketing corporation, which resulted in its downfall. Farmers to know that that is being explored. That is to say that the, 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 the farmers and the government together would establish this particular facility, not just the state alone, not just the government alone, and which will purchase produce from the farmers and to make the arrangements for the export of those, those commodities. 
You know, we have gone, there are many formulations like this. You know, we have had a Banana Growers Association which did that. Then when the market preferences were, were being eroded to the point of extinction and fair trade issues had arisen, the fair trade organizations took over the marketing function. Before that, and until that itself also became uneconomical. Before that, you had and still have an art association. <coughs> in all your days when we had cotton, you had a cotton growers association, which involved in the, with, the, with the marketing. And of course, you had a marketing corporation. And the former Labour Party had established this marketing corporation. It was working pretty well. It had an adjunct supermarket. And they, when the NDP came to office, the, the supermarket was basically turned into, it, it, it deteriorated into more like a corner shop. And the, the, the marketing corporation was losing money. And they essentially closed it down. Prime Minister Dr. Afghan Sobs also used the opportunity to commend farmers for their hard work, especially those who were experienced setbacks due to the volcanic eruptions, noting that he has been seeing an increase in productions lately. The Prime Minister said Cabinet is considering a subsidy on fertilizers. I'm hoping to have come to Cabinet tomorrow a proposal which... Uh, um, I'd ask the Minister of Agriculture, in conjunction with the Input Warehouse, to see the extent of the subsidy we're going to put in for the fertilizer, because the prices are going sky high. Eh? Yes. And unfortunately, as the prices are going sky high for the fertilizer, and you have enough overproduction of commodities, some commodities, the prices of those are falling. For instance, tomatoes. You know, the, the, the price of tomatoes gone rock bottom now. Yeah. Fishermen in the community of Barley are rejoicing about a recent catch of 18 blackfish. On Monday, a group of 12 fishermen made the massive catch of pilot whales, which are referred to locally as blackfish. Fishermen told SVG TV News this haul sets the 2022 record for the largest number caught in one day. They explained that the last month has been difficult financially as they were not able to catch any fish and still had to spend money on fuel for their fishing vessels. They said their spirits are high as they are now in a better financial position. We went out that we made some blackfish. We caught six, another boat caught five, another one caught seven. That's the biggest number for this year, but a couple years back, we still had like 20-something on the show. We feel proud about that because that is really livelihood. We ain't doing nothing else. Every day from Monday to Saturday, from January till December. And it gives benefit to very good. As long time we ain't catch nothing, you know, so we go and put the money to use. The practice of whale catching in SVG has been met with protest over the years by international ocean activists, especially for orcas known as killer whales. The fishermen told SVG TV News whaling is their livelihood and they intend to continue. These people, we know they're under vexed, and European Union vexed about we killing them. They're making complaint to guns up. Then you, that they had the people then kill anything them and not stop them. Well, we feel bad about it because that, that is your livelihood right now. Because if it wasn't for blackfish, I couldn't even get a house. If it wasn't for, I couldn't even live now. That I live by right now, and when I'm only me alone, I did have a brother going to college, a part of that helped him out. An information reaching SVG TV News is that a whale escaped a fisherman in Beckway today after it broke the harpoon. Consentions, especially children, are being encouraged to develop a passion for reading and to visit the library in their community to help with their reading skills. The encouragement comes from librarian with the National Public Library Archives and Documentation Center, Gian Julian, who was speaking on NBC Radio on Monday on the activities being held for Library Week as under the theme, Connect with Your Library. The week-long activities are also being commemorated are also in commemoration of the 129th years of library services in SVG. 
a reading so you want to establish a regular reading routine such as story time at bedtime so I want to encourage um, parents especially to have a bedtime and have some books at the side table mm -hmm. and say come on story time so I do this after with my two-year-old son and he loves it to run to get a book and we come on the bed and snuggle up and read uh, we could also encourage children to read on a regular basis by making books available everywhere so I'm a librarian, so I have a library. I actually, when I built my house, I made mm -hmm. sure I had a library. A library, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and then I have books everywhere. So every nook and cranny, mm -hmm. there is a, a book, book yeah. even in the vehicles. Librarian Natasha Seals outlined the week of activities, which started on Friday, April 1st, and will end on Friday, April 8th. Our Amnesty Week. This is where patron can run, return over the books, without any penalty and any outstanding fees will be waived. Secondly, we are encouraging per person to visit the library to view our virtual tour of where we are, where we were, the future of library service in Simmons and in Red Ains. Well, last week, Friday 1st, we had an open of our vlog competition, which closed on Tuesday the 5th. We invite people to submit a video why they love their branch library and email us at publiclibrary at vincysoft.com. We will announce the winner on our Facebook page on Friday, this Friday. Additionally, we have our first virtual meet and greet. This is where local and regional librarians and informational specialists interact and share the inspirational story and new development in the informational field.